One for All, the Chris, the DJ Chris Via story uh, is out now on Amazon Prime, full documentary. Uh, it was filmed back in 2018 when he was competing in the Red Bull three style competition. I was actually at that competition, too. It was in Philly, right by like kind of where I live. And um, and yeah, it, it, it's a great documentary. I have a lot of questions. You know, documentaries don't happen a lot for us DJs, right? Us DJs usually don't, uh, you know, uh, aren't the subject of documentaries. So it's pretty crazy. Like, I have so many questions. So not only do we have Chris Villa here, we also have the director and executive producer, Jeremy A. Lopez here, who put together, the, who's responsible for this whole do- documentary. So, uh, you know, let's bring him on. Without further ado, hold on, let me get my sound effects. Make some noise for Chris and Jeremy, ladies and gentlemen. Right here, let's go. I got to get my headphones out. That way I can hear you. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Is it connected? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You guys are seeing the behind the scenes here. Show business. There we go. One, two, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. All right, can you hear you guys perfect. Can you hear me? What's up? Yeah. Cool. I can All hear right. you perfect, Chris. Jeremy. Give me a one, two. What's up, man? One, right, two. Good. We're good. We're good. We're good. What is up, guys? How's it going? I, um, Chilling. yeah, I watched the whole, I, uh, uh do- what's up? Oh, no, go ahead. I, th- I thought I was uh, supposed to be on earlier. Um, cause like the Arizona time, we're not the same as, uh, Pacific time or whatever. So I've yeah, been you hit me up, like, like, I think we're starting at 820. Air. I was like, yeah, damn, that's so early. I feel bad, bro. You day that oh, was man. probably from five AM. No, nah, no, nah, I, I had I had to get the kids ready for school and everything. So I was just kind of like Yeah, it's all right. So yeah, I, 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 got... No, nah, just I, the I, kids I, like they I'm running around crazy in the morning, so just wanted to make I, sure I wasn't wasn't missing something. So No, nah, I feel you. The, the, I can't wait for my kid to go to school and all that. It's going to, it's going to get crazy. I, I watched the whole documentary with my kid and he was watching. He was like, he was literally like looking at it crazy. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what your dad does. And then you like, <laughs> then you start doing that, like uh, 125 BPM uh, scribble chirp or, or um, uh, uh, chirp flare or whatever. And I'm like, actually daddy can't do that yet. Uh, he's actually really just at like 80 BPM at that, but like he's working on it. And I go, <laughs> <start getting> some- <laughs> he start doing some crazy cuts. Um, yeah. I, I got to ask though, like, so how did this all come about? Like, like, did, like, Jeremy, did you like, uh, you know, like discover Chris somewhere? Did you like, did you guys know each other beforehand? Like how did, how did all this come about? Yeah, man. Um, well, we went to the same high school. We weren't in the same year, but, uh, you know, I have a, I have a big family. I have five sisters. Chris has five brothers. They all kind of like were in the same years. Um, uh, but, uh, so I, I knew of Chris, but I didn't, we, you know, we didn't hang out in high school and whatnot, but just, you know, afterwards, um, I kind of kept tabs on, saw what he was doing on social media. And then, you know, my sisters, every time they'd be in town, they'd go out to his gigs and talk about it the next day and everything. So yeah, I just kind of started following him and, and, uh, had an idea to hey, maybe shoot a little documentary following around to some gigs and, you know, uh, do something for, for his fans kind of thing. So it, uh, Pitched it to him um, about a year before we actually ended up doing it. I think mm-hmm. he forgot about it. I forgot about it. And then, uh, you know, things just lined up. I'm like, hey, let's let's uh, actually try and get this done. And that was before Red Bull. So um, we were just initially going to do uh, just a little thing on him uh, without Red Bull. And, you know, we went to, to the Diamondbacks. I think you were, you were with the Diamondbacks at the time, I think. Yeah. And, uh and then uh, right before he agreed to do it, he well, I saw that he got selected as one of the Red Bull finalists. And then we're like, oh, shit, got some uh, real anchor to the to the documentary now. So, yeah, that's it's kind of how it happened. How, like, how was it filming? Did you guys like uh, like have a whole crew or is it just you like? No, it was pretty small. I mean, we uh, when we shot in Arizona prior, you know, probably a couple weeks prior to, to Red Bull, um, we had probably th- a crew of three, maybe four, uh, a couple days, but uh, real real skeleton crew, real sw- small scale. So, uh, you know, we just kind of 
put it together on our own and did, did the best we could with what we had to work with. Yeah. Was it like, was it weird for you, Chris, like having cameras following you around? Like, especially like when I, the, the, the one shot that like made me think like, I, like I would have felt weird kind of was like when, um, cause I was just looking from your perspective, like it, when it was at the Red Bull three style in Philly, when you were like walking up to the stage and the camera was following you like behind you, I just think thought to myself, I was like, man, I would feel so weird. Like with all those people I'm about to compete. I'm nervous about that. And then there's like a camera behind you too. Like, was that kind of like, like, did that affect your nerves at all? Like, you know what I mean? Uh, no, I mean, at that point I was already kind of used to the, to the cameras, true, you know, yeah. um, and, and like with three style, I mean, it's like a huge production. So, you know, there's, whether it was his cameras or Red Bull's cameras, like there were cameras everywhere, you know? Um, oh, so nobody knew any different then. Yeah. It was just like, another yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would say like it, it initially, it did take some time. Like, you know, I think we filmed like a good chunk of it, like the, the morning after like I was DJing. So like, you know, I kind of wish like I wasn't so puffy and everything. Like I got a little bit more rest. And, <laughs> you know, wasn't a little bit hungover or whatever, but not, nah, um, yeah, no, nah, like that, that was one thing that I just kind of looking back, I'm like, Oh crap. It's all good though. Yeah. What's the dynamic of that? They're like, do you, like, do you guys all kind of, cause if there's a crew of three or four people, so like, do you guys kind of like get to know each other first and then, or like, you know what I mean? Like, like how, how does that work behind the scenes? You know, like, or is it just like show up and turn the cameras on? It's like, all right, start, you know, start acting DJ yeah, well, right now. Start. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy has experience on camera. He, he acts and, and, you know, does all that stuff too. So, like it was like i had a, a coach you know what i'm saying like he is a director i guess that's what directors do but um yeah it was pretty natural like anybody was cool with jeremy it was cool with me so you gotcha. know i uh i didn't feel too weird about any of it yeah and i i didn't know your homies with uh domino too i haven't seen that kid in forever he used to live around me oh yeah uh, he, yeah he'd be at scratch homie. academy and stuff back in the back in the day like 2015 and all that when we were you know yeah he's a now I, I mean, even that too, just kind of like the way that everything played out, um, you know, with, uh, with Jeremy and then, you know, with three style being in Philly, like I had, you know, been going back and forth between Philly and Phoenix a lot, you know, to go play in, um, Atlantic city. That's, that was like where they would fly me into. So just, nice. yeah, like, I don't know. There were a lot of like random, like, uh, things that just kind of all like you know came together and made me feel like more comfortable to to do something like this i i just couldn't like disregard those signs like that they, they didn't mean anything you know what i'm saying if that makes yeah. any sense um, no, makes but yeah the, sense. the dom the dom connection like three stop being in philly um jeremy there's another guy on there named i rock iron who helps film some stuff and Oh, out man. here in the in the music scene like you know i've known him for years and stuff like that so it was just all kind of there was a point where i just felt like all the homies had just come together to make something cool you know yeah that's really really cool what, what kind of schedule was it like how like how how often were you guys filming or was it just like all kind of like a day or uh we went out uh did some stuff at uh Dimeback stadium one of the games um it didn't end up in the in the cup but we shot that was a day couple days in phoenix um maybe two three days and then two three days in philly and then the day after so probably no more than seven days total oh, so it's pretty like pretty tight schedule yeah so really couldn't afford to do more and i think chris <laughs> we we tore apart his dad's house to to kind of do a lot of the uh, the interviews and have family rolling in and out so it was a lot so i, I don't think uh could have gotten away with much more of that yeah there was like one or two like solid weekends of just you know filming from you know friday all the way through sunday um so we got a lot done during those weekends but jeremy actually lives in la so uh you know he was having to come out here for that stuff too and then go to philly as well so that's insane well like yeah well i mean chris was chris had the kids you know uh, his wife was working chris had still gig so there was a, a lot to fold in at, on top of him trying to get his set together 
So, you know, it was, uh, I was trying to get what, what I felt we needed for the story and then also not get in the way of his creative process. And um, so it was a, it was a balancing act for sure. Yeah. Speaking about the set, how did you get all that music cleared? Like you put the, in the documentary, there's so many, like you can hear all the regular songs and I only know, and I don't know shit about this. The only reason why I'm even asking this question is because yeah. I remember when the AM documentary was coming out, it took forever to come out because they were raising more money to clear all the music for all the, the mixes he did because they had to like get like, I don't know, however that new royalties type stuff work. Like, how did you handle all that? Right. Right. Well, uh, since we were covering a live event um, and it was about Chris and there's, uh, you know, throughout any music that I use is in reference to a point that I'm making. So that's uh, falls under fair use. So don't necessarily have to clear that. And, you know, how it, to be able to shoot a documentary about a DJ competition and you have to be able to show what the DJs are doing and that inevitably includes some of the music. So if you notice, like I don't sure. use all the sets of all the DJs and kind of pick my spots to kind of give a flavor. So, yeah. you know, that, uh, ended up being what was, what was usable. Gotcha. Gotcha. And like, huh. So, so if I wanted to use anything for like a soundtrack or something like that, I wouldn't be able to do that. So, you know, there was a, there was a song we had at, at the beginning for the opening credits that I was trying to get cleared and, you know, didn't able, we weren't able to, be able to do that. So I had to find something else. So gotcha. And yeah, like, it's do nuanced. You, do you like, do you pitch the whole thing to Amazon prime ahead of time before you even film it? Or like, how does that work later? Do you, do you film it ahead of time and then like, and then like show it at different places and then try and get it some, you know what I mean? Like, is it like a big gamble? Like yeah. Film the whole thing ahead of time and then let's see what we could do with this type thing. I mean, if, if, uh, if it was, you know, if you're shooting a documentary about Brad Pitt, well then, you know, people, the Amazon will buy it uh, without even shooting it. You just tell them, Hey, we got permission to shoot. We're going to do this. And, and then they probably fund it and all that. So, you know, at, at, at our level, we, in most people's level, they shoot it and then they, they find a distributor for it. And I work in the distribution field already. So I kind of already had the hookup. So I knew, it wouldn't be a problem to to get it out and, and put out on platform. So Amazon's just the first one of, of many. What, what's a distributor? Like, what do they do? Oh yeah. So um, if you're a filmmaker, you have a, you know, shoot a movie, you're trying to chop it around and figure out how to get it out to an audience. So uh, a distributor has relationships with direct relationships with all the platforms. So they, talk to the filmmaker and say, Hey, I can get your film on Netflix, Amazon, you know, uh, red box or, or whatever. And then they sign a contract with the filmmaker. So yeah, yeah, no, it's still, it's still a thing in, in a lot of places, but, um, so yeah, so, um, I have relationships with several distribution companies and, and, uh, I knew one of them would definitely be interested in, in, uh, this film. So that's crazy. Yeah. So it's basically the, uh, the plug, the distributors, like the plug, they connect all the dots, like behind the scenes kind of thing. Like, you know, like pitch <laughs> yeah. It's like a sales kind of <laughs> more pitch. or less. Yeah. Like, I like a lot of like, I, 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 you know, I got a lot of DMS, um, from some DJ saying like, you know, like, you know, questions to ask. And like a big one I really got was like, well, like, is there like, is it basically how, how, how can a DJ become a subject <laughs> of a documentary? Right. Like, like that's what everyone's at. Like, how can it be me too? type thing? Right. And like, I kind of want to hear from you. Like I, in my head, I know the answer, but like, you know what I mean? Like Chris has been putting in like the work forever. He's been like, you know, there, there, if you, if you DJ, if you Google DJ Chris via there's, there's, there's videos on videos, on videos, on videos, on videos, on videos yeah. of him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and then I, then that would be like, that's in the back of my head. But like from, from your guys' perspective, like, what would you like any tips on that? You want me to kind of answer? <laughs> I mean, go for it, Chris. You go, you go first since you're the one who who had the idea. I guess. Oh man. Well, I, I guess first off, I had to figure out who this was for. You know, um, was this for DJs? Are the DJs specific, particular fans of Chris, or a more general audience? Mm -hmm. So. It's the hardest part. Yeah. And I think I landed because I didn't know much about his 
personal story, at least I just knew the bullet points going into it. So as I learned more about that, I became more interested in that side than, um, than the DJing stuff. So it became something that was probably equally about Chris as a person and then Chris as a DJ. So, you know, I felt like uh, something that ended up ends up appealing to a more broader range of people, but, um, yeah, that's a man. That's a hard question to answer. I, I think you know, make friends with filmmakers. <laughs> I don't think they that easy. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I think creating a good brand for yourself definitely helps as well. I mean, you, you, there's no uh, yeah, there's no, that's a good way there's no sure it. sure fire ro- road, but like your best chances of like of having any opportunities in life, I think, is just like putting yourself out there and creating a good brand and being good yeah. at what you do, and then hope you know, and being a good person, and you know. And then, uh, you know, sometimes the stars kind of align, right? You know? Yeah, I think this was one of those opportunities where, you know, to what I was, I mean, that's could have just said the stars all align for this. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what happened. Um, I, it wasn't ever like my plan to like have a documentary made or anything like that, you know? And that's one thing that I want to say publicly is like, I didn't go and like be like hey can you guys make a movie about me like yeah that's like not not <laughs> like that doesn't that's like totally not my personality you know what i'm saying um, Yeah, 100 percent. but yeah like i uh i prayed on it i thought about it and i had personal reasons as to why i agreed to do it um but yeah i think like like you said everybody just you know if you put that hard work in like opportunities are going to come you know, and uh, what else did I want to say? Yeah, definitely. Look, have you seen that movie, Along Came Polly? No? no, that's what Ben Stiller. Yeah, yeah. So like, it, it's like about this like washed up um, I'll write it down. child ch- child TV star, and uh, he like hires this camera crew to film it, and he keeps telling everybody <laughs> around him that like that they're <laughs> shooting a e like a e true Hollywood story about him. And then it yeah. comes out at the at the end of the movie. He finally mm-hmm. admits that like he put his own money up for everything, and you know, like nobody really cares about him. Like oh, in I the, gotta in see the that current... movie. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Ben but, Stiller's uh, perfect for that role because he's like he plays the perfect <clears throat> douche. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, like I kind of felt like that a little bit, but that wasn't the case where I was like, hey, like. Can you make something about me? Like, no. Um, Were you reluctant to do it? Because like you guys got deep too, you know, talking about, you know, your, your upbringing and family and, you know, and your mom and everything like, you know, and it was, it was really cool to see, but like, it's like, you gotta like, it's, it's gotta be scary to get vulnerable in front of a, a camera. You know what I mean? Like I, I never have in my life. And like, that would scare the shit out of me. Like what, like, did, did you, you know, did, did it take like, like what was your process of like even deciding to do it and then like getting the, kind of courage to do it i guess like it's like you know yeah i mean this is like uh like i said i had my personal reasons for wanting to do it like you know my mom passed away from cancer um i didn't really get to know i knew my mom well you know what i'm saying but there was still like more time ahead that i couldn't have gotten could have gotten to know her on a different level you know like yeah. at the at the time that she passed away, like, I was still pretty young, and, like, she did a really good job of, like, uh, hiding that she was sick, so when we found out, like, she was actually going to pass from this, like, it was just, like, a bomb had got, gotten dropped, yeah. and then, you know, it was, like, scramble mode to, you know, to spend time and to try to catch up and all that stuff, and um, yeah. there were just things that, like, I wish that, like, I had asked her and knew about her, you know, um, so when this opportunity came up, I was like, well, you know, here's my opportunity to leave something to my kids and my family or even my grandkids. You know, they could see this moment in time about me and, you know, maybe that'll make them feel a little bit better um, for whatever that's worth. But, yeah, the, it, there was that. And, all, and also, like, we all have a story. Right. So, like, who's to say that, like, I'm not worthy to tell my story, you know, Um mm-hmm. Obviously, I see a lot of people like putting like DJ AM, you know, rest in peace. But he's another DJ who had, you know, a documentary about his life. And uh, 
yeah, I mean, his, his story is his story and my story is my story. You know, like we, everybody can take something from any of us, you know? So that's just, uh, I was like, all right, like these opportunities don't, opportunities don't come every day. Like, like I said, I prayed on it. I felt like even though it was uncomfortable as, as hell, like I was just like, you know, I, something tells me I got to do this. So, and you know, the people that have reached out to me, um, I know that there's like a lot of DJ specific fans that want to see like, you know, yeah, you do see like the process and you do see me like on the turntables a lot. But also there's a lot of DJs who are in a similar position as I am, you know, as a family man, as, as somebody trying to balance work life. And especially in this like chaotic, crazy, you know, atmosphere of DJ and, you know, nightclubs and traveling and all that stuff. Um, you know, I want them to see that like, hey, like this guy is, is like me and he's doing it too, you know. Um, exactly. And also I feel I, I feel like there's a lot of like, misconception and about what we do you know everybody thinks that we're just like these crazy party animals and you know that's that's all that there is to being a dj you know but um because i get friends all the time and you know maybe they should pick better wives and girlfriends and stuff like that but well and I'm, that's I'm being funny point. right now <laughs> But no, no, like, no like, <laughs> that's a really good point, though. I think like they, every if if you're a DJ watching this and you uh and you got a uh you have a female in your life that uh every once in a while <laughs> might let out a little squeak about you being a DJ for whatever reason, you need to sit her ass down, hold her eyes open, and make her watch this documentary Dude, because I, you're gonna I, really got, see. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like no, like that. I've, because, I've literally had people tell me in my face and have gotten messages like, "Hey, like my girl," and I'm not and I'm not just calling out the girls like it could be guys too you know like whoever your partner is like like anything you know if you take it seriously and you treat it like a like a career you know like i'm not saying like like what we do is fun like have a good time because that's why we do what we do is because yeah. it's different from like a typical nine to five you know but uh exactly. but yeah i mean you get what you put in with anything in life and if you you know like Nobody, like you mentioned, like the videos on videos, like I, nobody told me, Hey, Chris, like go, go create all these videos. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. like, I did that before I was even getting paid to do that. But you know, like if you keep putting stuff out there, keep putting yourself out there, like good things are going to come of it. You know, you have to go the extra mile, you know, facts. That's and you, you told me the one time I had, had you on my shows, like you said, uh, you know, as an artist or whatever, you want to, you know, don't, 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 you want to die empty. You want to put all your art out there before you die. And that's literally what made yeah. me post a TikTok. <laughs> and I went and fucked well, myself. That's, I, mean, I owe you everything, bro. It's insane. Like I literally, I got, I, I hung up from that interview. I'm like, man, he's fucking right. <laughs> yeah. Now you're crushing it. Now you have like insane, millions dude. of followers, but now Jazzy Jeff, uh, he's the one Said who, that, right? who told us all that. Yeah. At the, at the playlist retreat and, you know, and that, and that was, you know, yeah. I yeah. mean, we all have, there's no, excuse me. There's no use in like just keeping this all to ourselves. Like we gotta, even if it's just little tidbits, even if like you only took one thing away from the whole movie, like as long as it pushes you forward in that direction and you hung on to that one thing, that somebody else told me, you know, like you can't underestimate like the power of like little things and how far that they can make a difference in people's lives. Literally one sentence could change everything. And, and it also proves another big point, which like I have, I scream this from the mountaintops all the time. And I feel like a lot of people don't believe me is that most DJs, the, the good DJs, the ones, the, the, the professional, the ones that do it for a living, the, 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 the good DJs, 98% of them aren't douches, don't fuck around with, with all these chicks or whatever. They, they, none of that stereotypical DJ stuff is true. It's only the new DJs who get into it just trying to, I'm trying to get bitches, man, and all that. Like Those are the DJs that do it. But like <laughs> the real DJs, the professional DJs, they got wives at home. They got kids. They got a family life. This is just their job, and that's a fact. Every every one of my favorite DJs I can name off the list, like all my favorite DJs, they're all family men, all of them. And they're all ridiculous at what they do. You know what I mean? And like, it, it, it's really like a terrible misconception that uh, DJs have. And I think like the movie kind of like uncovers that, like shows like the real, you know, like the real side. And then I also think like your wife is like a real one and she's like a great example 
of like, you know, someone who gets it. And from a female perspective, like she gets it. She's like, nah, like, you know, like she literally explains it like, like the, the, the real, like how it works. And, and it's like, that is what every female or male, like you said, you know, needs to hear every significant other needs to hear out of her mouth. Like, like explain her perspective on like dating a DJ and everything. And it's just like, it's just, it's beautiful. It's just, it's beautiful. Shouts, shouts to her. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. She's cool. <laughs> she's crazy. <amazing. laughs> Uh, did, but I, no, I, I don't like, give any spoilers too. Like, but did, did she almost like, uh, you know, she, she almost throw down at the end there? Cause I thought she was going to throw down, man. I was waiting for it. I've got my popcorn. We'll get into that. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I might as well say right now, like for the record, like it wasn't, uh, me and that DJ, like we go way back, like, you know, yeah. like years of friendship before three style. So, um, it had nothing to do with me losing, like, until this day, like I'm happy, he won like i don't lose sleep like i'm never like oh i should have won like it's in the past cool you know like yeah i'm moving forward as everybody else should but um but yeah it just had to do with like some you know personal stuff that like i said like we all we've all been friends for years so you know it wasn't it was just like on some like family friend stuff that needed to get squashed that night you know um yeah that's it <laughs> like what was it like behind the scenes like what was it like filming jeremy like like it's at the end there too like you know what i mean like we're like uh what, well what i mean like? that that part in particular well i um you don't hear audio because it's what happened we our batteries died and you know we didn't have any juice to the mics oh, and no shit eventually the, the eventually the camera died and that's you know we're cuts off but no yeah. i mean i my job is to uh capture what's going on and find moments and you know even if i mean there was not even that point but there's other times that i felt very uncomfortable or i was out of my comfort zone um particularly you know asking chris and especially his dad about you know his mom and uh you know but it it's outside of the emotion of the moment it i knew you know moments like that feed the greater narrative the greater story so you just kind of got to push through the discomfort of being there in the moment capturing things that that you feel are you know too personal or too private or too whatever to to really you know have the camera on for um and just because you capture it doesn't mean you have to use it so that was kind of the yeah. rule that i went by but uh, but the camera I had has this like external monitor that's above the camera. So, you know, I'm watching it. And then, so anybody around me can see what I'm filming. Um, so, you know, in that moment in particular, you know, I kind of made my way outside the door and I had no idea what was being said, but you know, I'm like, this is, it was still riveting. <laughs> and some dude next to me goes, bro, you're savage. That's Via's wife. I'm like, yeah, I know, man. So, uh, oh man, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> and uh, so, and I just kept filming, but uh, no, it was uh, it was it was it was an emotional, exciting night, you know. I had no idea, no idea what I was getting in, into, uh, so I had no idea what to expect, and it was just it was overwhelming, it was such a cool event, yeah. It was, it was crazy. I, I, I don't know how much the, in general, if, if you guys got to watch the documentary and see everything at the end, you know what I mean? But, um, but, uh, you know, Chris's wife is super passionate. I, my girl would have been the same way and everything. And like, so, you know, when, when it didn't work out, you know, she was definitely like sticking up, you know, for Chris or whatever. And, you know, and, and that's basically what happened. There's a lot of like, you know, passion there. And like, you know, my, I wouldn't expect anything different from my girl, you know, she's got to, you know, she's got to <laughs> go, go down swinging. <laughs> And the, and some of the um some of the uh some some of the jokes though like throughout the routines I remember being there and again, I'm I'm actually in the documentary and I'm always I'm just stone faced just fucking watching and I hate it like you 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 told me you hit me up about all this Jeremy and I'm like all right cool and you sent me the link right and finally because I've been waiting to watch this too because uh, we talked about it months ago Chris like that this was coming out I finally and he's like yeah dude you got a lot of screen time I'm like I do I'm like all right what the fuck I'm, I'm like I remember being there and sure enough literally at the end especially when Chris is going like it's like it goes to Chris and then it's like Jeremy literally just 
turns the camera and goes right on me. <laughs> and then the Chris, like, cause like I'm like right there in the front, like watching. And I'm just mean mugging the whole time. I'm so mad at myself because I don't realize whatever. Just so you know, like I remember being there and just thinking like, oh my God, I need to practice. Oh my God, I suck. Oh my God, like this is insane. Like that's all I kept thinking over and over my head. Like, and, and like I couldn't even like vibe. I'm just like, I'm thinking like, Jesus, like that, what, what cut was that? Like I'm like deconstructing everything. Like I'm like, what can <laughs> and it was just, and you know, if you're a DJ and you haven't been to a competition, I wish they would bring Red Bull back. I don't know what's it. Did you, did you hear anything about that, Chris? Are they bringing that back? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what like it, the pandemic killed or whatever, but like y- if you go yeah. and you see like these performance sets live, like it really does. Like it's like the most motivating thing in the world. You know what I mean? Like seeing like what, like seeing it on video is one thing, but when you see it live too, it's just, it's so cool. Like it really like motivated me big time. And I was just sitting there contemplating my life in the back of my head. I was like, man, I thought it's like a humbling experience. <laughs> it's like, man, I fucking suck. Like, how, why can't I, you know what nah, I mean? Man, I mean, even like as a competitor, like it's not an easy thing to do you know um yeah it's so yeah i mean it, it could yeah it's it's tough i see somebody mention uh, dmc dmc is cool too um but what i what i do like about three styles it takes like like kind of all aspects of dj into one competition um so shout mm-hmm. out dmc dmc is the greatest for like technical djing you know and technical creative djing but what this uh, competition does is there, you know, DJing isn't just like all about being technical. Like there there's, I've seen DJs who don't have as much technical skill, but the way that they play music, you know, is, is equally just as dope and should be respected in the same sense. So that's why I think like this competition was great because there's a, uh, it, 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 focuses on different aspects of DJing. So it really does. And like party rocking in general, you know, and that's basically what you have to do there. And I think that was a, a part of it, you know, crowd reaction and everything um, is a big part of that competition. You're performing in front of the crowd and, uh, and you had like a crazy reaction too. like, it was, it was dope. How do you handle like, Man, all the, like all the dissing? All the dissing? I don't know. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, like, is that like, like, like you just expected it or like, you know what I mean? Yeah, Every- I, mean, I expect I expected it. Everybody, you know, I think was was dissing that night. Uh, I will say that some DJs need to try harder because I think like three DJs <laughs> played the same song to, to diss me. But nah, yeah, it's all it, good. Um, it was literally but the yeah. same song. <laughs> nah, yeah, nah, that's just me being a jerk right now. We- but no, nah, it was cool. It's we- all in fun. Yeah. And during the interviews, we uh, we asked Chris about that, and uh, he kind of predicted what you know what would be used against him, I guess. And it was like he was right about the whole thing. I didn't end up using the the cup, but it was pretty funny that oh yeah, he was right. That's uh, they only had a very limited list of very obvious things, and and they used them. So yeah, I mean, but uh, I'm I'm short as fuck. Like literally in my set, I diss myself like on like some Eminem eight mile shit. Um, Cause I just knew like, it's, I could like, if you're going to diss me, like I could do it even better, you know, like I could make fun of myself even better. So yeah, just kind of took that into my own hands. How long did it take you to prepare well, for three style and all that? Dude, it, it, it took a while. I mean, the whole thing is like, just, I wouldn't say like there was like, there were definitely times where I buckled down and was like trying to prepare for the set. But I think like, as, as soon as I knew that I was getting into the competition, there were just all these little things like notes and stuff that I started compiling, uh, things like ideas that I, that I knew that I wanted to include in my set and then, you know, just kind of put it all together. But and it's like I a think, string uh, of ideas, essentially. Like, like, like you, you do like, like, all right, you come up like you have uh, these three songs, you know, like a wordplay to get in between these three songs. Then you have this idea, this idea, and then you kind of figure out a way to string them all together. Or is it like you start at one song as the anchor and then take it from there? Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, like just making notes, like literally like writing down notes of like this this idea is cool or this tone plays cool or whatever and then i think the hardest thing is just starting it off 
like figuring out how to start it off. And then from then on, like, I'm pretty good about, you know, piecing everything together. Um, and also like trying things out live, whether it be like at a showcase or like a club that I'm doing here in town, like, uh, you know, kind of testing the waters with certain things and seeing what works and, you know, yeah. yeah through a lot of parallels to comedy there. It's literally like comedians. Like we're, it's so similar. It's like insane. You know, that's what comedians do. They, they, they show up to, to comedy nights or whatever, and they just try out jokes and they work them out and see what kind of reactions they get. And then they end up just stringing the ideas together. And that's their whole special according yeah. to what I listen to on podcasts anyway, but it's well, super interesting. No, I see. And it. editing I, a film. I, I work, I work with a comedian. Oh yeah. Editing the film. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Because I mean like, yeah. And that, and that, that's what I, I kind of had to tell myself is like, I'm the subject of this and like, you know, but also like just as I'm a creator and trying to make something and have a vision, like, so is Jeremy. So I had to, you know, keep that in mind too, and not try to like mess with, with his dish, so to speak, you know, like just let him do his thing. Did, like I will say Chris didn't, he didn't see any of it until we did a little premiere, friends and family premiere um, in Phoenix. And I, I really debated, you know, bringing him in on, on periodically, but I, I knew that he trusted me and, and uh, man, that's a, was an incredible amount of trust. Just give someone your, your life story and, and all your, you know, family home videos from high school and stuff to, to go through. And uh, so, yeah, so he had nothing to do with the, the editing process. And, you know, but I told him, Hey, you'd see this at the premiere and there's anything that doesn't sit right. Let me know. We'll, we'll work on it. So I was going to say, like, what if you watch it and then, uh, like, like you end up being a, a villain, Chris? Like, would it be fight on site? Like, bro, why did you portray me like this? <laughs> 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 no, nah, he, he would re- really have to be doing, like, some serious editing, like, chopping things. <laughs> and pasting them all together to, to make me see mm-hmm. certain things. But, no, nah, like, I was pretty, like, confident in, like, what what I remember talking about, you know, like, I am who I am. Like I'm always trying to evolve and progress as a person. And like, I will say that I've changed a lot since then too. Um, but you know, I've always been the same person mostly, you know, so I didn't really have to doubt myself. And so you didn't feel a need to like, cause that's another thing too. Like some people, I feel like you get a camera in front of them and they change and they try and like mm-hmm. act in front of the camera kind of thing. And is that something like you, like, did you, you know, think to do that at all? Or are you kind of just, cause you were super like yourself the whole time, but like, is that like through coaching or is that just like, you were just like, I'm just going to like, how does that all work? That whole dynamic? Like, it's so interesting to me, like filming a whole documentary, you know? I don't know. I mean, I definitely don't, didn't want things to be fake, you know, yeah. like I, I don't, uh, I'm big on like being who you are and, um, I'm, really like that's like like i really like like i won't dj anywhere that like you know they won't uh let my friends in or family in and stuff like that like i'm just like if i don't feel good about something like i'm not gonna do it you know i'm not gonna you know waste my time so uh i think with this is like i don't like fakeness so i just was like i just need to be me and i think having everything having my family around you know filming a lot you know in my in my home you know my dad's house uh at my gigs and stuff like that i think uh it all made me feel like comfortable you know and did you like when you went to a gig and stuff like like they followed like having the camera crew and stuff with you like at a gig like did you have to like get every like jeremy did you have to get like everybody to sign a disclosure or did you have the sign out front like you had a three style where it's like if you're walking in this room you're going to be filmed like yeah, I mean, it's trying. It depends on the venue. Uh, there was a, I think, a Fourth of July or something. And there was some event going on in Tempe, like one of Chris gigs, but it was outdoors. So, you know, if you're outdoors on the street and in Arizona in particular, you don't have to have them sign a waiver. But if we did an interview with them, would have had them say something on camera, then I had them sign something just to be safe. But, um, but yeah, so it just depends on the situation. 
Gotcha, gotcha. But but yeah, I mean, as as far as like Chris being real on camera, I mean, he uh, it, it was it was almost trying to get him comfortable to 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 be forth forthcoming and just spill you know whatever he felt like spilling because he's he's pretty quiet reserved and you know like you said it's you know some guys will try and act for the camera and others will, will clam up and they'll you know be quiet and whatnot and you know this the thing that happened with his mom um uh happened almost immediately so that affected chris throughout the rest of the time we were interviewing him so it uh almost Im- immediately um well i mean we had we had there's a bunch of things that happened during filming that uh you know we'd have some poltergeist stuff some things that would you know fall <laughs> and and yeah what? but it happened yeah oh yeah um it happened when we first started interviewing chris and, and if you go back and see it you'll know what i'm talking about but you know we're, we're i asked him the first question something we hear this this crash behind chris it looked like one you know it sounded like one of the lights fell or or the can't you know something and so we look back and everything looks the same it's everything's fine and you know in that moment I, something affected chris he felt something and i just oh yeah I and i caught that, that interview. And, yeah and luckily asked him about it and then that was how that all came up because i was stressing about how to bring it up in the first place because it was um you know, obviously a huge part of Chris's life and his family's life. And I'm like, I, the, this feels, this feels almost too personal yeah. to, to get into. And, and so she kind of forced the issue. Yeah. Yeah. And like, if you look in like a lot of the videos that people are reposting, like I'm not extremely hungover. I'm not like <laughs> extremely like unhealthy looking, you know, like my, like my face and like my eyes are all puffy. Cause I literally, literally just uh, got done crying. Cause um yeah like there this is like what he's talking about has happened like maybe once or twice before that and it's like a very um like specific feeling it just kind of like takes over like i don't know if you've ever had something like that happen but it's like it's the weirdest feeling ever like i don't even know how to explain it but it just kind of like takes over like you know, just catches you off guard. So in that mo- moment, like I knew like, oh shit, like this, why is this like, this is going to happen like right now, you know? And it was like, definitely <laughs> my it, mom, you know? Is it like in your chest, like almost like an anxiety kind of feeling like a pressure? Like what, like what, like, like what would you it's say? It's just like this, like, it's just like this, uh, like this swarming, like feeling like, I don't even know. And it just, like, I can't move, like, I can't do anything, and, like, it's almost like it, like, kind of, like, I don't know. It's weird. That's like, crazy. Yeah, yeah, but it's very real, and it's, like, like I, I can't make this shit up, you know? And, it, and no. like I said, it's happened, like, since my mom has passed away, like, like once or twice before, where I needed it. Like, there was, like, some some stuff that I was going through in my life, and I needed, like, I needed to hear from her, you know, and uh, when it happened, like it happened and it changed me. And like from then on, like I was like, OK, like I know I'm OK, you know, um, that's insane. Like I like in the grieving process, like I can kind of like I can kind of move on. Like she's telling me like it's OK, you know, um, yeah. but yeah, like right, like literally like one or two minutes into just sitting down, like sitting down, getting ready to go in this exact room right here. And, uh, you know, everything is, is fine. And then I just like, think something fell and then you just kind of took over. And then like, I just had to get up and walk out of the room because I already knew what was going on. It's just overwhelming. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. I kind of, and it happened in Philly when we were interviewing Tara and, uh, it happened a couple of times. So just random, we hear these loud random noises, but like, you know, somebody just dropped a pile of shit on the floor. And so, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it got to be kind of ridiculous because it was just so obvious. So um, she, she (laughs) definitely was present throughout the whole thing. That's so cool though. That's great. 
and I, I've I've had uh, uh, experiences with uh, with uh, stuff like that, and uh, it's it's very very real. It's one of those things that you'll uh, you know you, you you deny and call everybody crazy until it happens to you, and then um, you know you can't deny that shit. There's no you know it's it's that's very 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 real stuff. You know that's yeah, insane. definitely. That's crazy shit. God, what um you know what would you would you guys like learn through this whole process you would say like you know what i mean like if you like like jeremy filming a dj you know what i mean and like the whole you know kind of getting a you know neck deep in the dj culture and the world and like kind of like you know our lives and you know in general man i just i have a profound respect for for what you guys do i mean um i had no idea the the scope of the fan base that follows DJs. I mean, that's, uh, it's remarkable. Um, I mean, looking at some of the videos from Taiwan that, that year, the championship that year, I'm like, geez, there's, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And, uh, I had no idea that the community was that large. Um, and, uh, it's to be performing on a live stage, uh, like the Red Bull three style, it's, uh, it takes a tremendous amount of work and talent and poise, you know, um, you guys are trying to tap into that hive mind and, you know, create, uh, get everybody on the same page on the same train that you're on to go on the same journey. And it's just, that's not an easy thing to do. And, uh, so to see, you know, Chris in particular has an amazing ability to do that. And it's, it's really cool to see. And, uh, that I think the, out of everything that I witnessed Chris doing live, you know, even filming with him before that he just stepped up, um, or delivered in a way that was, uh, that everybody responded to. Um, and I'm curious, and I had no idea who was who in the crowd. So, I mean, I was looking at your face for months as I was editing and, you know, <laughs> I could tell you were, you were just taking things in, uh, this guy's an asshole. but, uh, but yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. this guy just fucking smile no uh i had no idea who everybody everybody was so i was just looking for for reactions and moments um and it's only now that i'm hearing you know people tagging you know oh this is dj so-and-so or this is so-and-so and i'm like oh wow there's a which almost makes it more impressive as chris did because he you know you guys know how the sausage is made you guys you know the fact that he got you guys on board and on the same train and tapped into your hive mind. It, it was incredible. Very so I'm good. curious if Chris, Chris, did you feel any added pressure the with the actual performance because we were filming as well? Like, did it add some, what, what did that feel like? Cause I don't think I've ever really talked to you about that. Yeah, no. Um, <clears throat> No, I would say just knowing that like this was going on in the background. I mean, you were pretty good about respecting my time and, you know, because, uh, you know, you know, I was like locked in that room for a long time in the hotel. I think I drank like 20 Red Bulls. Like, yeah. I, like I'm not even joking, like because they just had like fridges of Red Bulls, you know, for us to take. So at the hotel, like I was just plugging away um trying to fine tune everything so you know i was just just uh chugging those red bulls down but you know he he pretty much left me alone like when we were in philly and i think i maybe saw him once just to get like a couple shots um went back to the hotel kept working before i knew it like it was go time and yeah like i said like there are already like a lot of cameras in addition to his so you know and once i was up there performing like I wasn't thinking about you can't you really can't think about being on camera like I mean you have to take time to like because I mean the stage presence thing is is a is a factor in um in the judging process but you know uh I wouldn't say I was oblivious to the cameras but I knew that like what I had to do up there was perform you know I had to I had to step it up um stage present wise and you know actually executing the the routine and stuff like that so i wasn't really worried about the cameras you know i was mindful but i was just focused on trying to do a good job 
I would have been nervous. Woo, man, I wouldn't have been able to do it, I don't think. I would have choked up up there. I would have just, like, froze. I don't know. Well, he was bad yeah. in cleanup, too. What's up? What? I said he was he was bad in cleanup. He, he went last, you know, and that's oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. just that yeah. by itself, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's the toughest yeah. position to go into. Yeah, and it's just so much things to go wrong. I mean, even with dynamics, his uh, Serato crashed. And I remember at the time, I just came out with a video talking all this shit on Virtual DJ. Like, literally that week, I was just like, I made this whole, like, thing. I don't know if you're familiar, Jeremy, but, like, um, Virtual DJ is, like, uh, is all right, in, all right, it, it, it's, like, do you use Final Cut or Adobe Premiere or do you use iMovie, right? And that's kind of, like, uh, Virtual yeah, DJ yeah. is, like, iMovie. But not really. It's just as it's, people are going to get pissed off right now as I'm saying this out loud. But like, it, it's not, it's a good, it's a fine program. But like, there's this thing. Anyway, I, I came up with this whole video flaming virtual DJ. And then Dynamics Computer Serato crashes. <laughs> and then it's all over everywhere. And everyone started flaming. Wow. See, see, motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, this is the worst timing ever. I hate you, Dynamics. Upgrade your shit. You know, uh, upgrade, um, update your iOS or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it, a lot can a lot can happen. You know, it's just yeah. I did, I did the best. I'm sure everybody else did the best that we could do, but things happen. You know. Yeah, just like way too many moving par- parts and shit. But fucking, um, are you doing any competitions in the in the future? Would you do that again, Chris? Or nah, no. 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 That's it. That's it. You're kind no, of. No, I mean. From... Yeah, I mean, I. Uh, I mean, never say never, but it's. I'm pretty. I'm like ninety percent. Like no, you know, just because I did it um, two years in a row, and like even during that time, it's like. You did you know, the year I, after uh, too. I forget. Yeah, yeah. This is like right before COVID, but just like, you know, with kids and and everything. Um, it, it was just like a tough time for me. And like, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I never really liked competition to begin with. Like, uh, it's just not my thing, you know, but I gave it a shot and I did the best that I could at it. And, you know, I can't beat myself up for that, but me as a person, like, I really don't feel like DJ competitions are my strong suit. You know, I've always kind of done my own thing and, created my own lane you know like um so i'm just gonna keep doing that the best way i know how and and evolving on that and i've never wanted to let like one opportunity or affiliation whether it be djing for a radio station a sports team doing a competition whatever like these are all things that i've done but i don't ever want to let one thing you know define me like i just want to keep moving forward and you know, trying to bring my my art into as many avenues as I can and, you know, keep creating. But I don't really feel like competitions are my thing. Like, I just I don't, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you had the experience and that's it kind of thing. Um, yeah. One one question I got a lot, too, uh, to ask you is, because you, you've been posting a lot of um, – uh, ridiculous routines you did at R and B and ribs, kind of off topic, I guess. But like, but like, how do you, how do you, um, like, do you have a process for uh, coming up with like, you know, word plays and things like that? Like, do you, do you, or it's just kind of like you just have like you look look through life through that lens, you know? Or do you like s- literally sit down and like listen to songs and you know? No, I mean, I, when I was like on a more like consistent schedule with creating routines, um, it's it's never like. I just always want to make things a little bit more interesting, you know, and word yeah. plays is like one of those things that kind of can catch people, you know, off guard in a good way, you know, like, Oh, I never thought to put these two songs together or whatever. Um, so that's kind of why, you know, when I was, you know, creating for beat source and DJ city. Um, but yeah, no, I just try to, I mean, I think like, it's just, like I said, like I always want to make things that much more interesting and entertaining. Um, so for like the R&B and ribs thing, though, you got to keep in mind is like these are parties where people come and like that one is like it's R&B, you know, mostly R&B. But, you know, um, it's like people come for the music, you know, it's yeah. not like people people come up there to like as long as I'm like playing the music that they want to hear, that they came to hear, you know, but I get there's still room for you know, 
to be creative with it, whether it be a word player or tone player or whatever. Um, but also, you know, we're, we're trying to rock the party. We're not trying to be up there, you know, doing like 30 minute, you know, three style routines and not letting the, the music do its job, you know? Um, yeah. But do the ideas just come to you, you know? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, some things I, like, I, some of the I, best things that I've done have like not been overthought and I've just done on, on the spot. Like I'm literally yeah. like cr- creating a loop, like right then and like an idea will come in my head and then I'm like, and then I like, I mean, I've done the process so much of like creating these routines that like I can pretty much make almost anything work, you know, uh, on a whim. So yeah, like some of those things, that's, that's how they happen. I got a question yeah. for, for both of you guys. Um, so in editing the competition and listening to everybody's full sets and everything, how much it, it sounded to me like there were a couple people whose set sounded very pre-produced and to where, you know, it didn't seem like they were scratching live, like the scratch or whatever was on the the pre-produced recording that it's almost like they hit play because either it was that clean or so I, what do some djs do that in a, in a situation like this where they they create their set on the side and then just hit play and you know kind of do some stuff live or is it all supposed to be live so, so that's way better question for chris <laughs> but like i'll say uh, <laughs> um so there's a lot of controversy around that. Uh, it's like how many, um, <laughs> my understanding of it is, uh, you know, how, how, how much can you lean on edits? You know, I think a lot of like, I think maybe some of them, again, all those DJs were shit on me. So like, I hate speaking on it, but like, you, maybe some of them might've like made a lot of edits to make it easier. What do you think? Right? Like, I don't know. Remember the one guy who faked it and got in the competition um, and then his whole video ended up being faked. What was it? He was from like Australia or some shit. It was yeah, like the yeah, year before. Yeah. And it was that big thing. He had that crazy fast, like, um, uh, the, the scratch right. He was a good DJ too, but the whole thing was faked. I forget what the fuck. Um, oh my God. Yeah. I don't know the name, but I know what happened. Wow. Um, I will say that that night, like, I don't think anybody faked it, you know? And that like, there are some DJs that are just really that good. And sometimes when you do when you do make a lot of edits and you are that good, it can sound really refined. Um, and I'm mm-hmm. not knocking that. Like, everybody has their own style. My thing is, like, you know, it's weird. Like, I, I can be super clean, like, on camera and, like, when I'm filming everything. But when I'm DJing live, like, I tend to be a little bit more raw. Like, I, I won't say sloppy, uh, but raw. And, um, but I also want from me, like what I prefer is like, I kind of like hearing those little mess ups, you know, because it's like, oh, this DJ is human. And, you know, it just, I like the rawness. So when I'm DJing live, I, I tend to keep it more raw than refined. That's all I, I want to say. thousand percent agree. And that's the way AM was like, he was famous. You watch, listen to any AM's mixes. There's plenty of little mistakes here and there, but like, it's just raw. It makes it, it, it humanizes the mixes. Like I, I'm the same way. I risk it for the biscuit every second I, ca- I can when I'm DJing live. And, uh, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't, but I feel like it does. It humanizes the mixes. Um, but one thing I will say, uh, I was going to do a whole segment on my show one time about it, but I was like, ah, cause it, cause I'll, I'll, I'll go over like an idea in my head, like for my show. Show, and then like I'll kind of like write it all out and I'm like ah I kind of sound like a dick so I'm not even gonna talk about it you know what I mean like uh, I'll record it like ahead of time and like see how how I sound and I'm like yeah I was, I was a dick back there I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do this live but like um I think a big big thing um is if you're gonna make a, a set like if you're gonna make a video you know what I mean like like in your room like in your studio you're gonna like you know do a little wordplay routine in your studio just like in a controlled environment and post it on social media that should be perfect because you could do that 1,000 times you you know what I mean? You have all the time in the world. It's not live. You know what I mean? Like that, those to me should be perfect. And anybody who like posts a routine that's like, you know, produced that in that manner and like there's mistakes of it. I feel like there's just no, I don't know, excuse for that. You know, that, that just drives me nuts. Cause you could have just, yeah, yeah. You know, did another no, I, take, I, you know, I know that there are DJs that do that because it is, it is like the, it's a huge uh, trend. Like nowadays, like, I mean, I'm not saying like I was the first to do it, but I will say that I was one of the earlier DJs 
to really make DJ videos for social media and, Mm -hmm. you know, do it consistently. And now it's like, now it's a big thing. And I love it because I love that DJing is so popular, but I agree with your point. Like if you're going to be filming yourself, like you really have no excuse. You have, you can do it a million times and, and get it right. But uh, I have been aware that there are DJs that like are just faking it for for the video. You know, it's like why? Yeah. You know, it because I mean, it, eventually, it, eventually, like you're gonna get booked off of these. You know that I I would imagine that like some people like that's one of the reasons why they do it is like you know to to they're creating content or whatever, um, and then in hopes that it might lead to some bookings or whatever and. If you if you get booked off of these videos and you faked all of these videos, like, you know, it's like it's going to show eventually, you know. I mean, is it faking really? Because like I in terms of the competition, it uh, I mean, I can appreciate a good edit. It is something that you create, um, but it's not necessarily something that you can reproduce live uh, without, you know, because you don't have the time. Um, the, the, the reason I even asked the question was because I felt the ones that came off to me as more pre-produced also came off to me as uninspired. And even though they were, they were cleaner, they didn't have to contend with the, the raw live emotions, the, the being present to the moment, to the audience, to everything that was going on because they had already pre created what, what they were going to do. So I, I don't know. I, uh, I feel like it can be an unfair advantage in one sense and enough also it, it can be detrimental if, if it's uninspired. Yeah. It, it, it's a, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> you know, everyone has their own opinions on it. I don't know. Like some people, you know, you know what I think? I think that the more you do live, right? The more you do live, the more you can act on the fly and the more you can adapt to the crowd. Whereas like if you lean on a, and this is my personal opinion. Okay. It's an art artist, subjective, blah, blah, blah. Right. You do what you like DJs. All right. Everybody always gets fucking mad at me. But I think if you do, especially with stems now, like I don't do, I don't play any pre-made mashups, anything anymore. Cause I can do it live. And I feel like you, you can adapt your set way more you can fine-tune your set way more live right there for any crowd when you're doing everything live if you're leaning on edits then like you have to wait for the edit to finish you know what i mean like like you're kind of like hoping the edit works hoping the timing of the edit works like maybe you want to bring in the vocals a little early like you know it's just something i found you know person i don't know what do you think chris i mean everybody has their their style and their preference you know like my preference is i like the rawness you know, I try not, and that, and that's kind of like what I wanted to show with my set is like, is let, it, I didn't, I didn't want it to sound like a 15 minute mixtape. You know, I wanted it, it to sound like a killer 15 minute live set. You know, um, yeah. To each their own though, but yeah, I mean, yeah. It's almost like djs have a huge advantage over bands because bands have to rehearse and bands have to have like a set list down like they can switch it up i guess set list but like a lot of times you know bands have things that they rehearse and that's what they're going to do and i've seen so many bands you know not really do well in front of crowds because they're just playing the wrong music but that's what they rehearsed i mean they, 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 what are they going to do like you know what i mean whereas like we can play anything so like we can adapt to the crowds and like you know, the more we're able to adapt, the better we can be. You know, there's so many, I, I, you know, I feel like DJing, like you call, you know, you're calling audibles all night, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're really, hmm. and so many times, and it's just from experience too. And just like so many, it's from so many times, like, you know, dropping something and like, and, and not working, you know, and it's, it, it also comes back to the, um, you know, the, 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 one of the hardest parts about DJing, it's not just, you could sit in your room and practice all day. You can, you can curate all the music that you like and like, you know, have all the craziest crates in the world and everything, but like to have confidence to play it, it, it comes from actually trying to play it li- live and seeing if it works, you know, and, and, and figuring out what combinate, like, I don't know, I'm going deep right now. No, no, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. And, and that's kind of my thing is like, I know DJs who are great at planning out sets um and i still like i mean it's something that maybe i can improve on you know i'm always open to improving but for the most part like you never know 
like what you're going to get, you know, like you have to be able to like, you know, trust yourself, your, your intuition as a DJ and adapt and play. Like, I will say like, nothing is ever going to go the way that you planned it. So why, why spend so much time and energy, like trying to plan for something, you know, um, at gigs, at competitions, a little different, but at gigs, you know, uh, but as long as you have like the right mind, like the, like a general direction of where you want to take it, you know, that's, a, that's enough for me to at least feed off of. Yeah. That makes a hundred percent sense. Can't over plan. Can't under plan either. It's all, I don't know. There's so many aspects to DJing. It's insane. Like it's so hard to put it. Like I think about it all the time. Like I'll get like super high and be like, yo, like it's fucking crazy. The layers of things you need to do and learn and know. And like, and I still fuck up all the time because I'm learning it and it constantly evolves because music comes out and the song that worked yesterday doesn't work today now. And it gets played out and it like, you know, it just, it's, there's, there's, there's a lot of layers. It's an onion job, right? It's like a, we're like onions, I guess. Dude, I don't fucking know. <laughs> That's something that I really didn't had no idea about that I grew to appreciate about what you guys do is that um, more than than film, even um, music has has a unique ability to unify, and you guys being the maestros of that unification or that that possibility is that's a lot of that's a you know great power, great responsibility thing in my opinion. You know, you guys uh, have the keys of the kingdom there. Being, being able to play whatever you want and, and uh, you know, wrapping up everybody who's listening to you in, into into one unified, uh, cohesive unit. You know, it's, it's really cool to see when it works. It is fucking crazy. You can evoke some emotions, too. Like, Chris, you ever fuck around and, like, try and start a fight with music? Like... Like I have when I was like 19, 20, 21, I was a little dickhead. I, I like, I, like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me see. Like, we'll be in a bar. I'm like, all right, you know, move, bitch. Get out the way. I'll just start playing some aggressive shit in a row. And like by the fourth one, all the fuckers, it's like insane. Like if it get the, the, I don't know. You probably never did that, Chris. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, nah, dad, but, I just yeah. trolled somebody the other night, but yeah. how, um, yeah, so, you know, uh, this girl was, like, holding up her phone. It was, yeah. like, I, dude, I, I let her hold up her phone for, like, 25 minutes. It actually took one phone turned into two phones. So she literally had ice on one phone, and then she borrowed, like, another one of her friend's phone and put spice. And we're just holding them up. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, like That's one, pretty good. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, one phone wasn't enough. Like, you weren't getting my attention. And I was, like, dude. Because I always try to, like, have, like, this, like, like, this, like, standoff with them, like, okay, like, if you really want to hear this song, it's bad, like, all right, what time is it? It's 11.20, all right, let's see, like, let's see if you put your phone down, let's see how many minutes it takes, and it was, yeah. like, a good, like, 25 minutes before, like, I even, like, you know, address the situation, yeah, so I guess she got me after 25 minutes, but what I ended up doing is I played, like, 10 seconds of her song request and then i hit i went into the um the old easy e sample from easy does it when he's like he says bitch he's like bitch shut the fuck up you know that it's like a oh yeah. shit so that's I, a good idea yeah so i played the <laughs> i played like five or ten seconds of her song and then went into that and then i dropped the ymca and then everybody like was, was going ham to the ymca yeah, yeah. Like, the, the five-year-old <laughs> never leaves them uh, from all these school dances back in the day. It's amazing how that song like has, has never banger. gone away. No, I know, never. but it like it's like amazing how it's still around, you know. But uh, it's great, but, timeless. Yeah. Luck luckily, I get to play in these spots that like aren't too pretentious and give me the the opportunity to have fun and to kind of mess with everybody a little bit. But <laughs> yeah. Be be beauty of open format that's hilarious you say that that's though i awesome. think i mentioned on my show before that's what i do if i if i want to really fuck with people i mean I, I didn't think about with the easy sample that's a great idea but i would uh if they're really bothering me i'll give them just a tip i'll literally just fucking play five to ten seconds of it and then like have a banger ready and then just be like yeah fuck you i played it and then, like you know what i mean it's, that's worse than not playing it i feel like because like you they, they get <laughs> pumped like oh yeah and then it turns off and they're, what the fuck and i'm like yeah you got it <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get beat up one of these days 
days because of it, though. I'm gonna fucking piss off the wrong person. I'm gonna. No, they're, wait, they're waiting outside the car. Yeah, they're right. Like right. looking. That that's why I don't have my logo on my jetpack. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't do any of that logo stuff because like I, I want to kind of blend in while I'm leaving. You know, I want like a big ass Nick Spinell. Oh yeah, that's a fucking DJ. Get him. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Get his ass. Um. But yeah, I appreciate you guys having all any uh anything you, like obviously we're gonna like uh plug the uh the the documentary and everything. You know, it's available now on Amazon Prime. I have the link in the description so you guys can check it out. Definitely fucking watch it. Um if you're a DJ or non DJ, don't watch it without your significant other though. That's all I gotta say. Like like sit down, like if you have a significant other, make them watch it with you as well. Okay. Because yeah. it's so valuable for both. It's really cool perspective, and you, you, I, I think any DJ will relate to it so much too. Like I don't know. Yeah, I really. Enjoy I mean, it. I, I have a dry sense of humor, and I, and there are like some, some jokes and a few cuss words in there. But I think for the most part, like it is family friendly. You know, um, I don't know if he's still in here, but there's a, a kid that I've been following. His name's RC Three. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Shouts to yeah. him. I love that kid. He's so good. Yeah, and like we have a similar like kind of story because you know he's uh, he's already on the radio and I think he's fourteen, um, and he sent me like a long like heartfelt video of like him just you know showing his appreciation for it. So you know it's whether you're a kid or whether you know you're a family man or you know your partner's tripping on you and thinking that this DJ thing isn't. <laughs> like legit you can do both you know and you can have the family and you can still have fun djing so uh you know just take what you want from it but you know it's it's i agreed because i wanted it to inspire people so yeah just yeah. hopefully it yeah, inspires djing people. is a real job it is a real job people i wish i could <laughs> yeah. it sooner and shout and shout out jeremy for like um kind of molding that that whole like story together and making it like really a beautiful thing because i've gotten like a lot of messages um yeah so i know that it's resonating well with people like i literally haven't seen awesome. any, any anything bad about it so thank you and alexis awesome, in the man. chat no, says you're, you're hot now. jeremy <laughs> oh alexis the yeah the... <laughs> dude you want thanks know, alexis you want, thanks you alexis Oh, you know her. Okay, I was going to say. No, no, no. It's weird talking because you don't, like, want to cut people off. But um, another random, like, sign that kind of made me feel like, oh, this is, like, kind of meant to be is. So that's his wife, Alexis. And my my middle name is actually Alexis. A ringer. Like, that's crazy. how random is that? Like, how many dudes do you know with that name, Alexis? But, yeah, put myself on blast. That's my middle name. I'm I'm big into that shit though, Chris. Like like you ever look, you ever notice like I I see uh, numbers and threes all the time. Like one 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 two 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 three 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 four four four, all the fucking time. Like like on a sign or or, or uh you know like ETA of where I'm time. going. You see sixes. So like no, then I Google it one day <laughs> and it's actually means something. Like generally speaking, if you see numbers and threes, you're kind of like where you're supposed to be. I don't I. I don't talk about this stuff publicly because people think I'm fucking weird, but like, I, I believe in all that shit, man. I think it's, I, it, there's a, there's a, you know what I mean? Like I, if I see a sign, then I'm like, all right, in my head, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it then. You know what I mean? Like I always see signs everywhere, <laughs> but maybe it's cause I'm looking. I don't know. Nah, I'll tell you, you the know, same way. Unless, unless don't talk to me great. about astrology though. Cause I don't know anything about that. Yeah. I don't, I don't believe shit in about that, that either. But... Yeah. No, that's just, yeah. Yeah. I know I'm a Pisces. That's about it. Um, I know I'm a Scorpio. Oh, you're a Scorpio. You're like my girl. Yeah. See? People crazy say and loyal. Crazy, but yeah. Crazy and loyal at the same time. I, yeah. Nick, I got a question for you. What's up, bro? Sorry to, to derail again. So you were there live, and from what you remembered live and then watching the film, was it? did you come, up, come out with a different takeaway, or, or did it? did you watch it as you remembered it when you were there? Um, so there was a, there's a lot of, there's a more of a behind the scenes, uh, aspect. Like when I was there, when I, I just remember arriving, grabbing a drink, it's crowded. I'm seeing a bunch of DJs that like I see online. I'm like, holy shit. You know what I mean? So as a DJ, I kind of was like, 
they, like all, all my favorite DJs were in one location, essentially. You know what I mean? So like that's kind of like I was engulfed in that. I was like, wow, like look, you know, like it's it's fucking Chris Fia, it's fucking Four Color Zach. He's a he's the fucking uh, judge. You know, it's fucking uh, you know I'm I'm a big Jay Espinosa fan as well. You know, like all that. Like so I'm looking at you know it, it was kind of like I was just like whoa, and then like just seeing the sets and I don't know. Like the film kind of showed like more of the behind the scenes, you know, you get to see like where, where everyone's hanging out while the sets were going on, um, you know, you know, kind of like the preparation and like what goes into it behind. Like I didn't I, I never got to see any of that stuff. So that's what was cool about it. You know what I mean? Mm. Like kind of seeing the, you know, the more you know, to, to bring it back the curtain, so to speak. You know, most people don't get to see all got that it. stuff. You just see the actual competition, you know, so. It was definitely cool, man. I I, I thought I thought it. it was really cool. I just you know it's just tough watching yourself on camera though. You're like me. I'm just literally just me my whole time. <laughs> but it's just because like I have I have so much going through my head. You know what I mean? Like I don't look at it. Wow, that's cool. And then go home and then you know keep yeah. doing what I'm doing. I look at like wow. I why how can I I need to you know what I mean? Like I just I always relate to my I'm I'm I beat myself up a lot. I'm constantly like ripping myself in my head. Like, how can I do this better? How can I do that better? You know, what, you know, things like that. And then, so like, that's, so it's tough for me to see, you know, like, you know, that's why I was being mugging. Okay. <laughs> I was leaving me mugging the whole fucking time. But yeah. Hey man, you're motivated. Definitely. You're hungry. So that, that, that's, that's a good thing. I'm hungry as fuck, bro. Very hungry. Unbelievably hungry. Yeah. Insatiable. It's a problem. <laughs> It's a literal problem. I'm a literal <laughs> psychopath. I'll never be happy ever. But I just, you know, you come, you come to terms with it. You know, just, you know, you gotta, you gotta enjoy the process, right? You know, you enjoy the whole, uh, enjoy the climb. You know, honestly, if, uh, if the climb ever ended, I'd be sad. You know, I'd be like, shit. Well, now what? You know what I mean? Like, I, like it, it's, it's the, 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 the fun part is the climb, right? I mean, I don't know. But anyway, oh, yeah. uh, you got any other projects coming up, Jeremy? Anything to plug? Got a few things uh, in the works, but nothing nothing quite pluggable yet. But uh, yeah, the the doc's out. It's going to be on a bunch of different platforms here in the next couple months. But uh, as for now, Amazon Prime Video, give it a rating, review. Those help us out a lot. Kind of oh true. Uh, Amazon is that on Amazon? And, you and review it? it to other people. So yeah, yeah. If you go you go to Amazon and and uh, you can click on a review. So cool helps out a lot. IMDb too, Rotten Tomatoes, all, all those film sites. So. Very cool. So we'll go. I'll definitely give you guys yeah. a rating on all those sites and stuff. Well, cool. Well, thanks for coming on, guys. I really appreciate it. Yo, Chris, apply for your blue check everywhere, man. The documentary comes up when you Google you now, and you probably get a blue check. Oh, okay, saying. cool. Like, like yeah. on Instagram, all that. Apply, apply, because you, you you're probably Gucci at this point, man. Get to cool, man. Get to the next <laughs> level, baby. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah, man. Thank, follow Chris for via. And stuff. Yeah, I kind of yeah. like not having the blue check. Do you really? Yeah. Oh. But no, nah, I'll apply. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll apply. fill out oh, the application shit. when he gets up. <laughs> nah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah just... Um, I think Juan said... Yeah, right now it's only on uh, Amazon, so I know you don't like to pay extra money to buy or rent it, but, you know, just... Uh, that would That would be appreciated. But, it's yeah. worth a couple bucks. Definitely hey. rent it. Check it out. You're going to learn a lot. It's going to be really cool and like, you know, it, 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 worth it. Worth yeah, it, people. At, at, at minimum, go give me a follow. Probably got to earn a fan first before I'm asking them to spend money on the on the movie. But, you know, go check out some of my stuff. Which, by the way, follow it's me. at DJ Chris Via. I have it in the description, too, but uh, make sure you follow them at uh, DJ Chris Via. At DJ Chris via uh, Doc is their um, Instagram for the Doc. Um, and I think you're at Jeremy A. Lopez, right? Yep. Yep. As well, so, so give Jeremy a follow as well. Um, you're going to get a bunch of DJ follows. They're, they're trying to get that documentary now. But, yo, what's up? Hey, I'm following them too, man. <laughs> but, yeah. But, um, but, yeah, appreciate you guys coming on. Thank you so much. Everybody definitely check out the documentary and stuff. It's available on Amazon Prime. And, uh, you know, and uh, interested to see what everybody thinks and everything. And uh, definitely watch with your significant other. You'll see. You will see. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, guys. Thanks, man. You're, Appreciate you. Uh, thanks, Chris. One, guys. You run a great show, Nick. Oh, thanks, man. I Later, try. guys. <laughs> All right.